All right, guys, so I'm throwing this in. This is gonna, I'll put this in right after the intro to the video. This is Robert's knife. If you remember, I told you guys about Robert Bottinger. Um, he was making an Bodiger. auction. <laughs> Bodig, how, how do you pronounce it? Robert Bodiger. 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 But there's, I put it in the link. This is Robert. Thank you, guys. So that auction knife that I put in my, uh, that I talked about in my video before I left for Japan, this is the man that made it. That was me. That's the guy. This the is the guy. guy. <laughs> So this is his newest. It's not complete yet, but holy shit. Yeah, I just got kind of tingly somewhere. All right, guys. Robert around. We basically are in Elliot and Chris's shop doing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that the other day. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about different finishes on scales. In the meantime, in Robert is helping me. Robert is helping me modify my V601. We're gonna do something unique. It's gonna, it's gonna be uniquely mine. Special, special, like that bus that that my, most of my friends rode. The little short one. <laughs> it's a better bus. Hi right, YouTube. So you just saw Robert. Uh, Robert's an awesome guy. Um, the uh, the uh, knives that he makes are amazing. Uh, he's got a a, a more production style, maybe mid textile knife that he's trying to work out with Elliot and, and, and taking advice from him. But what we're here for is, since you've seen, say my wife just got a phone call from my daughter's skating coach's daughter in Japan. So this is what we're gonna talk about. So if you remember, this was just the standard straight, plain uh, tie. And uh, Robert uh, assisted me in showing me how to work the equipment and basically gave me a crap piece of titanium. Showed me what to do, said, go nuts, figure out what you like, do it. This was originally gonna be green. I was going through the voltage and I found this blue. Uh, I was gonna go with bronze and green uh, because I didn't like the purple. I was gonna uh, re-anodize it, the, the hardware. And we were looking at it and I was like, you know, we were both talking, I was like, I think it would be easier just to do the, the knife and find a color scheme. As a matter of fact, I think I actually had kind of thought that out in my head before, but at any rate, so I have carried this knife. Uh, so I've been back, this is two weeks now that I've been back. Um, and uh, I did sharpen this, uh, I freehand sharpened it with uh, a pretty fine, you can see there's still some scratch marks on it, but you know, I'm not gonna tear up a 12,000 grit strand just to make it pretty. I got it where I wanted it. I did a hand convex and uh, it's this S35VN it is way different. You heard me talk about it if you watched the video where I shaved with this, it's way different than the S35BN that was in my Sapenza. So, issues with the knife up front. Um, first of all, I've gotten accustomed to, I, I, this is too big, it's almost too big. You know, if, if I'm trying to use it and you know how sharp I talk about how I keep my knives, if I have to do any work up near the front, I've got a lot of that knife exposed in my hand. And if, here we go, it's Thursday, throwback Thursday. Elliot's original Predium, it's first appearance in a video of my videos. I, I don't know why he doesn't like this knife. It's amazing from an outdoorsman standpoint. But if you look, there is a choil. I can get up forward. The blade is not near as long. Uh, in all actuality, this blade is pretty long. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty long blade. So um, I did just knock that into Elliot's thumb stud and uh, took a little nick out of it. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I mean, all in all, it's it's a very, very nice knife. It snaps open with authority. It, it actually has uh, some, <laughs> I would consider recoil when it snaps open. It doesn't, a lot of knives that just snap open, they just, they just stop. This has got enough weight forward that and you can see it, it moves your hand when you snap it. Yeah, it's, it's, got, it's got recoil to it, uh, almost. Um, it, it seems to hold an edge really well. This, uh, back to the steel, um, S35VN and S35VN, different makers heat treat differently. Elliot's Pretium. Elliot did a specific secondary hardening on this. And I can tell you, I sharpened this not like any Elmax I ever sharpened. It was a beast to sharpen. 
So that you can account for the difference in edge retention between different knives just by how the, you know, how the maker, my hair's getting long, I haven't cut it in a while, how the maker heat treated it. So some of the things that I touched on in the original video is uh, the little details. Now, having taken this apart, I found more little details. It is hollowed out for, for weight. The, it's, uh, it's skeletonized inside. They, they actually milled the scales out to, to minimize weight. Um, the over-travel and uh, steel insert are hidden, just like on a Riat. Uh, like I said, these things, you could almost consider them cousins if you wanted. Uh, there's a lot of the features on this knife that are kind of the same on Dave Deng's knives. Um, this uh, milling pattern that they have uh, along the, uh, the, the, frame, the scales, surprisingly, as smooth as it feels, gives you some pretty good traction. It's not aggressive, but it's also not, one of my favorite words, vestigial. So um, I've, done, I've done a lot of good cutting with this, uh, with the factory edge before I actually sharpened it. Um, I cut a lot of cardboard and this, this edge shape, uh, this blade shape is pretty good. It thickens up up here. And like I said in my in my unboxing video, that is the same angle all the way up. It is. I measured it. I, I laid just out of curiosity. I set my edge pro up and I laid that angle and I brought it up and I touched it in different and see if the stone was touched. It's the same. Now mine was not twenty seven on each side. Mine was I think twenty five if I remember right on each side. And uh, I said I had a minor misgrind, which I had thought about sending it back and. I actually thought about it. If I got to send a knife all the way to China and wait and then have it come back, do I really want to do that when I can just do it? So um, I took care of it when I sharpened it. So uh, this is a pretty good all around knife. Uh, blade shape is not uh, something that would be prohibitive. You know, there's a lot of times that you get these tactical knives or you get the recurve knives. Not, I'm sorry, not recurves, crambit knives. They don't, they only serve a couple purposes and it, it's a defense type of scenario. This is a outdoors style knife. I mean, it's not, I, I wish it was a little broader across the, the blade width, but all in all, I mean, it cuts well. I, like I said, I cut a lot with it. Um, I've carried it. Now, the, the part about it that I do not like, told you I was gonna talk about some negatives, that pocket clip. I talked about it before. Um, I don't like it. I, I, it's not that I hate it. It's just, it's, it's not wide enough and it just does not have enough tension and I find that the knife wants to walk around in my pocket. Um, put it in, in perspective, I think I walked seven miles at work today. I've got blisters on my heels um, from walking uh, around that much at work and it, it's not that it's bad for me, it's just that, like I said, when I carry this, it, it walks around in my pocket and then when I sit down, I feel it's not where I want it. Um, this one, however, has a clip that's about the same and it doesn't because there's, that is tight. There is a lot of tension on that. Like you, you, it doesn't fight you to come out of the pocket, but you know that it doesn't, it's not gonna come loose. Um, I would be afraid that if I was having to do very much vigorous running about things that this, this could bounce loose because like I say it's, I'm not putting much pressure on that. Um, the bearing system in it uh, is fairly smooth. The knife is fairly smooth now. When I talk about smooth, I don't know if ev not everybody's idea of smooth is the same. Um, when I talk about smooth, it's a tactile thing. It's a feeling. Um, so you can't feel it when it goes out. But like as you bring it back, you can feel that on the travel of that, you can see where the detent ball is there. And that's the other thing. I don't like the detent ball necessarily, the detent pocket being so exposed. I don't necessarily like that. But you can kind of feel there's... There's gritty, rough, and I mean, I've cleaned it up and I put oil on it, but it's until that ceramic ball cuts its groove into the softer, the steel that's softer than the ball, it's going to have that. But, you know, my Farron Forge Archbishop from the second I got it, which I picked it up at Elliot's because I got it before it ever hit the website. The second I got it, there was nothing. It's like, it's like glass. It's, it's like so smooth. You can't feel that ball roll on that 20 CV. So um, the other down part, downside, 
the tool that comes with it for taking it apart. Um, it's not, as you can see, it's a proprietary reverse star. And it's locked up in the safe where I'd show you because I don't want to look at it because it was so frustrating taking this knife apart and put it together. It's like that long with a split ring on it. And I was like, you know, why couldn't you just have made a hex bit? You know, a hex bit. And I could have just thrown it in my Greg Burger and taken the knife apart. No, no, it's that tiny little thing. And I've got big mutant hands and those screws are small. And I'm trying to take that knife apart. And I had a bunch of coffee and uh, Robert was laughing at me because I dropped parts, I dropped washers, I dropped bearings, I dropped everything that was in that knife, trying to coordinate myself with this tiny, seriously like an inch long handle on that with a split ring through them. And I wound up uh, popping a split ring off so I could just use it like a tiny little driver. Um, the flip side of that is I don't feel that I got it as tight as I wanted to. So, you know, those, th those are just the, some of the negatives. Um, other than that, like I said, it's all in all, it's a really good knife. I do like um, the, the, the touches, the, the attention to detail that's put into this for a $235 knife. $235. I'm not seeing much difference between this and some of the, re the $400 Riads. Now, I will say that my $400 Riad has carbon fiber. and But, um, yeah, I, I don't... I mean, I know that labor is cheaper in China, but I, I don't see how some of these guys are going to compete. Elliot and I were talking about that. Th these guys are doing really good work. But what we, I did notice, and I think that some of what they're doing is, if you were to look on that right there, right there at that cutout, I think that they're mass anodizing all of them and then bead blasting some of them or picking certain colors because down inside here, it was purple. It was purple, and it still is. You just can't see it as well um, unless you're in the right light. It was purple down in there, and when we took it apart, there were some other spots in here that were purple around the pivot. So I think, I think they're anodizing all the scales purple, and then just picking and choosing. You know, it's easier to just take a few and maybe bead blast them, and then re-anodize them a different color if that's what they choose. Um, apparently, uh, my friend David, De White Kessel, um, apparently his came this color. Uh, I don't know if it came this color scheme or not, but it came purple. So there's probably going to be a second video today. I haven't done any videos for a while. I have two videos I wanted to do because I'm reviewing this. And I do need to review that Sapenza that I got months ago that I still haven't done. Um, but yeah, like I said, all in all, it's a really good night. It's nice and light. Uh, it carries well, except for the walking around in the pocket a little bit. Uh, for as big as it is, I mean, it's a big knife. I mean, you can look at, I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to go in and grab the little card and do, you know, stats on it. Um, but, you know, for a knife that's that big, it's really, really light and, and carries well. Uh, with the exception of the pocket clip, you know, pocket clip and the misgrind that it had. And the fact that they no longer send you, they no longer send the second piece, you know, the extra hardware for you to look at. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. The, uh. Ah, oh, disappointing thing. The workbench has been empty. I cannot turn this into a full business. I don't have customers. I don't know if, I don't know if uh, something happened. Uh, people got tired of my, so maybe I'm not doing a good job, so let me know. Um, and the other thing I was gonna say is I have done a few videos where I turn the camera around and I get, I watched, I don't usually watch my own videos very often. Um, I noticed that it's, I don't think it's any clearer than this. I don't think you're seeing a better picture of it than this. I mean, maybe I can zoom in on some stuff. So, you know, let me know which way you like it. If you don't like looking at this the whole time, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll flip it around and I'll do the other side camera. And I, I have those wide angle lenses that I could possibly uh, use, and, and but I'm afraid it, it makes it kind of a an odd, things look too big or too small when you use those wide angle lenses. I've actually erased videos because of that. So. Um, other than that, you know, hey, YouTube, uh, I will uh, try and get another video in and get it posted tonight. Uh, if not, I'll do it. I can't do it tomorrow. Um, I'm probably going to go take my daughter ice skating with my wife and then maybe stop by Elliot's shop Friday night. So anyway, you guys have a good evening and I will talk to you later.